Welcome to Good Morning Tasland. In recent years, we've seen an increase in the adoption of climate change policies around the world, but the latest science shows we still have a long way to go to meet the challenges of minimising and adapting to the inevitable impacts of climate change. Many people have heralded the recent Paris Agreement, an international call to action for governments and companies everywhere, and it's anticipated to spur further developments in the climate policy space in the coming years. Joining us live is Professor Karen Hussey, climate change policy expert and deputy director of the Global Change Institute. Professor, welcome to the program. Hello, thanks for having me. So what can you tell us about the Paris Agreement? How is it different from the international climate change agreements we've seen in the past? Well, there are three developments from the Paris Agreement that are significant. Previously, the most ambitious goal that had been internationally agreed upon was a two degree warming limit above the pre-industrial baseline by 2100. This has been concerning as the weight of scientific evidence emphasises the dangers of a two degree warmed world. Now with the Paris Agreement, for the first time in the history of climate change negotiations, around 180 countries have united behind a goal to keep global warming well below 2 degrees by 2100. In fact, they'll aim to limit warming to 1.5 degrees, since this would significantly reduce the risks and impacts of climate change. Secondly, all countries have, for the first time, agreed to report their emissions regularly and transparently. Lastly, from 2020 onwards, rich nations will provide at least 100 billion US dollars in climate finance to developing countries, with the view of encouraging deep emissions cuts. Speaking of which, so far around 190 countries, representing 95% of global emissions, have submitted their greenhouse reduction targets for 2030 to the United Nations. Is that, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. These reduction targets are formally known as Intended Nationally Determined Contributions, or INDCs for short. A good example of an ambitious INDC target is that put forward by the European Union. The EU is aiming to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 40% below 1990 levels by 2030. So what specific climate policies are countries using to achieve their respective INDC emissions reduction targets? That's a good question, Diane. Now, some countries already have quite significant climate policies in force. For example, through a command and control policy, Australia has been phasing out inefficient light bulbs since 2009. This has reduced the country's emissions by more than 2.6 million tonnes of CO2 equivalent per year. And looking to China, we've seen some major policy developments in recent years, particularly in the space of carbon pricing. In fact, when China launches its national emissions trading scheme in 2017, it will cover around 4 billion tonnes of CO2 equivalent. That's close to 10% of global emissions. In light of the recent Paris Agreement, we can expect to see more policies like these being implemented by governments in order to achieve their respective emissions reduction targets. On that note, I think it's time we take a more detailed look at some of these policy examples. Professor Hussey, thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. My pleasure, thanks. And coming up, an around the world trip to Japan, Australia, China, the EU, South Africa, Zambia and Panama to better understand what climate change policies can look like in action.